Hey there, Rockstar. Welcome back to String and Story. My name is Holly Ann Knight, and it's my job to guide you to quilt and to live with confidence. Today, we're going to make some square and a square blocks, and I'm going to start out by showing you how to traditionally piece these blocks. Now, I'm going to make a four and a half unfinished inch block. So, I have two sets of squares here. This is my center square. And here are the two squares that will become the setting triangles, if you will. Now, it just so happens that for a four and a half inch unfinished or four inch finished square and a square block, these are both three and three eighths inch squares. There's a whole chart on the blog that goes along with this video um, showing you the different sizes that you need to cut based on your finished unit size. Okay, so let's get started. This orange square here is going to be my center square. And I have two teal squares that are going to be my setting squares. And I'm going to start by cutting corner to corner on the diagonal to turn this into four squares. And it would have been an intelligent thing for me to grab a slightly larger ruler to do so, but it'll be just fine. All right, so I now have the setting triangles that are gonna wrap around the center block. Before I actually start sewing anything together though, I wanna use, I'm gonna hit this with an iron to smooth out that one little curvy edge. And then, I'm gonna fold this into quarters, okay? This is just some creating some light crease marks that I'm gonna use as a guide while I piece, all right? This isn't anything that needs to stick around long-term. You could mark these, uh, but then you have to deal with getting rid of the marks, and a simple fold will go away with the iron in just a bit, all right? First up, take your first triangle and you're gonna line up the point on the center crease and the edge with the edge, okay? Like so. And then, speaking of sewing, sew a nice scant quarter inch seam along that edge. I'm gonna drop a wee bit of scrap fabric under here, just so I don't have long tails. Sorry, y'all had to lean over and grab the thread snips. They were on the other side of my camera. All right, and I'm simply going to finger press this triangle up into place. We'll hit it with an iron in a second, but it's not quite necessary yet. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side, okay? Make sure that edge is lined up nice and level. Sorry, everybody. And pass through with that scant quarter inch seam once again. And I'm gonna move my little leader and ender to the front so that once again, I don't have to deal with long thread tails. And finger press open. Now at this point, I think I will actually hit it with an iron. I want these to be really flat as I attach these final triangle pieces, but do make sure that you simply press the crease that you've already made with your hands. Don't take the iron and press out and stretch, okay? Just hit it straight down and firm up that crease. Now you can see I still have my little crease here. If I did not still have that little fold line, I could fold this center section in half again to give me that reference point. But it is conveniently still right there. I'm gonna do the same thing on these last two sides. Now this is a unit, oh, didn't quite make that snip. This is a unit that I am making it slightly oversized and then I'm gonna trim it down at the end, okay? It just makes everything a little bit more forgiving that way. But a little bit of extra wiggle room. that edge as you're stitching along. Don't let it wander off. Now I'm keeping uh, my hand on there simply guiding that piece of fabric, making sure that it doesn't become misaligned, but you want to be careful not to be tugging on it because by cutting on the diagonal, we did create bias edges, right? All right, now I'm going to finger press this once again, and then I'm going to hit it with an iron. Same thing, be careful not to distort those edges. You wanna keep everything nice and straight. Now, 
I said that this was gonna be a four inch finish, which means four and a half unfinished block. And as you can see, I am uh, quite generously off from that. I can just barely see right here the center of those creases I made. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but I also have a dot that I have marked on my ruler to mark, uh, to mark the center point of this four and a half inch square. This ruler is four and a half inches square and I can set it right over that point on my block. And you notice I'm wiggling around because I'm trying to make sure that I have a proper quarter inch seam on all sides and I'm struggling to attain it. So I think I'm gonna start by just cutting on one side. We're gonna cut right here. So you see I've got my quarter inch seam all lined up here and here. So I'm gonna cut these two sides. And I'm gonna rotate this whole thing. And see where we're at. Yeah, coming in just a little shy, which I'm not a huge fan of. All right, so get that as close as you can to those quarter inch seam allowances because you want the center of your block to be the center of your block, you know what I mean? Trim it off, and you have a gorgeous square and a square block.